Hi, it's Rochelle Schrader. I'm just calling. I'm just checking in with a video um, to go through the final parts of the class. So I've completed everything on the list. I'm doing this last one here. Send an email to your instructor overviewing the strategies that you use to support students. Um, as I was really um, supporting teachers, I'm going to kind of go through the things that I did to support teachers in my district. So um, first, when we started, we were um, required to have two meetings a week with each of our teams. I was a facilitator for five CCTs, so I attended all of their meetings, and unless they overlapped, and then sometimes I had to toggle back and forth between the meetings, but overall I attended the 10 meetings a week for that. As a member of TLCS, I also um, attended two of the meetings from our TLCS representatives. Um, they usually had question and answers and some general information that they gave to us as, as innovators that we could bring to our teams. And so I attended those meetings and brought information back. Also, if my team members had questions, they could contact me and I could take those to those meetings to get answers for them. Um, after we got started with our CCTs, um, the, the teachers were coming up with classwork for their Google Classrooms, for our mega Google Classrooms, and I supported them when I was in their teams. Um, I, I was an active participant in gathering the information. Um, usually the CCT guide was a person who was posting to the, to the classrooms. Sometimes some of the regular teachers felt comfortable with that as well. Um, I had office hours that I hosted every week for, I think, seven weeks, um, where um, teachers could come to me and they could ask me questions or just chat with me um, about different things and how things were going. And I had several teachers came, came to the um, to that to my office hours to talk. Um, however, not a lot of them did, and I think it's just because I really had an open door policy. Um, if people had questions or comments, they got a hold of me on their own. Um, they always had my phone number. They always had my email, text, texting. Um, so if people had an emergency come up, I was always available for whatever help that they needed. Um, I noticed that in this COVID. Um, teaching that, you know, a lot of the questions were really tech questions and not as much content questions, which is generally what my job was. So um, as questions came up, I, I tried to make sure that I answered individual questions, but also if they were questions that the group had, um, I tried to do some of my um, asynchronous videos for that also. So um, I had emailed you my asynchronous videos. I do have a Google document that has it on there also. So this is kind of where I kept track of the, um, the videos that I had for my, my class. Um, I sent them out each week, um, usually at the beginning of the week, and I would send it in an email just to have contact with, with my teachers so that they could see some of the tech questions that they had. They also had tech innovators and regular building innovators that um, they had for other resources that they could reach out to um, if they had other tech problems or other problems. Um, um, due to taking this class, I started experimenting. I thought, well, if um, Davenport has said that what they would like to do for next year is they want to make sure that each teacher has their own Google Classroom. I'm still not 100% sure if I understand how that is going to work for our music teachers. I know that they still want to be able to have the idea of our CCTs working together so that it's the same um, information going out to our students. Um, so they would be working together um, K through 6, 7 through 8, and 9 through 12 to come up with the content, but they would be able to um, put the information out individually. So whether they have like a first grade, um, a first grade Google Classroom for Eisenhower or if they attached it to each individual um, class at Eisenhower, if there were four different sections at Eisenhower, they might attach it that way. I think from my understanding and talking to the other content innovators that it would probably be a building-based decision. 
but I know that I need to be able to support people using Google Classroom. And I do know that I have new teachers coming into the district and they may not have the experience. So I kind of experimented around and um, in my drive, I can go and see all the Google Classrooms that I had showed you before that I was part of. But what I did is I created my own K-12 through vocal music classroom, which um, I put up here at the top. So I really don't have a lot of information in this right now, and I'm kind of stuck in the settings right now. But um, um, I have my own thing here. Um, one of the teachers that I was talking to um, in the district mentioned that it would be nice to not have to go through and search for videos that I had sent out through the email. So I thought this might be a way where they could go back and they could say, oh yeah, remember that one time that Rochelle made a video about this um, and it was in her asynchronous thing. So the only thing I really have right now is I, instead of posting them separately, I thought it would be easier for them to remember that it was just during the COVID time. So I have in there the classwork and I have the async videos that I created so that they would be able to um, access that document and go back to any of the things. And then in the future, I'd be able to stream things. Um, I would, I have not yet, but if, if this is something that the teachers are interested in, I would probably invite my, my class would be the teachers of um, K through 12 vocal music, and I would invite them to be part of my class. And just messing around with us a little bit, I feel a lot more comfortable um, feeling like I could help and support the, the teachers if they had questions about Google Classroom. So, um, so I guess to sum it up, I attended CCTs. I had office hours where I was available for synchronous times. I was available um, through phone, email, and texting. And I created asynchronous videos. Um, and as I go into the future, I will probably be c communicating with them if this is something that they're interested in by having our own K-12 vocal music Google Classroom so that I could um, share my own asynchronous videos with them and share out different things um, with the group of teachers that I work with. So let me come, go back to my original page I was on with you. Um, I know that my experience was different than like a regular classroom teacher. So I'm hoping that if there's something that I'm missing for the class that you would feel free to contact and reach me and let me know what I need to do to um, finish any requirements. But that's what I've done in order to um, connect with my teachers and my teachers were my students. Um, so again, if there's anything that you need from me, um, you'll have my email address. You can reach me that way. And um, thanks for the class. I enjoyed it. I'm going to check this off and I'm going to stop my video and post it.